Hello everyone, my name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is on how much programming knowledge is expected from a DevOps engineer. This is a very important video. Many people have this question. I keep getting this question very repetitively on TopMate when I'm doing career counseling or people put the same question on YouTube comments. So I thought I'll make one dedicated video and make it very clear for everyone on how much programming is expected from a DevOps engineer. So firstly, let's try to categorize. Let's try to split DevOps engineers into two parts. One is freshers and the other is experienced engineers. So freshers, I'll talk about it. Like after I talk about experienced engineer, I'll come back to freshers. Firstly, experienced engineers who are trying to transition into DevOps or already DevOps engineers, you have two options. One is either you apply for tier one companies or tier two and tier three companies. If you are applying for tier one companies, then they have very uh, specific set of process. That is, they have a very structured process and uh, this process is more or less similar if you are applying for development, if you are applying for DevOps. So that is, they expect you to have knowledge on data structures. They expect you to have knowledge on programming. They'll give you some problems and you need to solve problems. Additionally, system design, high level, low level, all of this is expected even from a DevOps engineer for tier one companies. So prepare yourself. If you are applying for tier one companies, you need to have knowledge on programming, additionally system design and data structures also. But tier one companies, very less people apply for them, right? And even the selection uh, ratio or number of employees in the tier one companies are very less. If you talk about tier two and tier three companies where most of the people apply for these jobs, there they will be expected. I mean, DevOps engineers will be expected to have knowledge on scripting. DevOps engineers will be expected to have knowledge on Terraform, Ansible playbooks. If you are using Jenkins, Groovy scripting. Otherwise, you need to have knowledge on YAML and all the other things that you are using on your day-to-day -day life as a DevOps engineer. Programming is not that much expected in tier two and tier three companies. Definitely, you will not be asked to write data structures. Definitely, you will not be asked about, uh, you know, uh, advanced concepts in programming or advanced system design, basic workflow of application. How does an application work? Or, you know, uh, as a DevOps engineer, do you know when application uh, gets struck or your application is not responding? In such cases, what will you do? How will you debug that application? How will you understand what is the problem with application? So these kind of things are expected from a DevOps engineer in tier two and tier three companies. If you don't believe me, what you can do now is go to LinkedIn, search for senior DevOps, principal, anything in LinkedIn and go through the job description. Understand what is the primary skill that is required. Understand what is the day-to-day -day activities for that position. And very, very rarely you will see people expecting good programming knowledge from DevOps engineers. So programming knowledge, even if it is expected, it is not expected as much as a developer because developers are responsible for writing web applications. Developers are responsible for writing chatbot applications. As DevOps engineer, your focus has to be to improve the efficiency. You have to reduce the developer operations. You have to automate the infrastructure. You have to automate the configuration management. So that is where your interview will also be on. Do you have strong Git fundamentals? Do you have strong Linux fundamentals? But saying all of these things, if you have knowledge on programming, let's say uh, people like me uh, who have uh, programming knowledge, who are from development background and also interested in DevOps, then it will be an added advantage. Like if you know development and if you are interested in DevOps, definitely you will be an exceptional engineer. You will have more chances compared to the other people, but that is not mandatory. So keep in mind, and I hope it is very clear. So tier two and tier three companies focus more on scripting, focus more on writing scripts, like uh, talking to APIs, getting some information from the APIs, writing uh, scripts to automate infrastructure on AWS or any other cloud platforms, node health automation, uh, getting the information from your node. These are kind of the things that are expected. And additionally, uh, just write some small scripts to uh, for string reversal, performing string operations, you know, writing some small loops and uh, solving some problems related to this. Now let's move to uh, freshers. So as a fresher, now this is important because if you have two options again, one is on campus and one is off campus. So off campus is like uh, you do some projects by yourself, keep applying for jobs on LinkedIn, right? Find DevOps engineer openings for freshers and apply there. Again, if you do that for tier two companies and tier three companies, you will not be expected more on data structures, but you will be expected more on the projects that you have done. 
So people will ask you to explain like, okay, why you want to be a DevOps engineer? What projects have you done? If you have done some certification, what is that certification? How did you prepare? And your questions will be on programming because you have done something in your college, right? So it will not be on data structures, but it will be on programming where people can ask you like, okay, uh, can you uh, solve a basic problem for me? And advanced data structures is not expected. Whereas on tier one companies, again, the process is same. Uh, for tier one companies, you will be expected to write uh, data structures and you will be expected to write some complicated programs as well. So this is the overall thing. And one thing that I want to summarize at the end is to understand the job responsibility of DevOps engineer. That's where most of the people are facing the trouble that you don't understand the end-to-end -end job role of DevOps engineer. How is it different from a developer? So to understand that, go through LinkedIn, go through multiple job descriptions and see what is the expectation from companies from a DevOps engineer. Once you understand that, you will not run into these questions. Should I learn data structures, algorithms? So keep your goal very focused. Again, if you're applying for tier one companies, then that's totally different. But tier two and tier three companies, be focused, understand what is responsibility of DevOps engineer, prepare yourself in that way. I hope you found this video informative. If you have any questions related to this, I'll be more than happy to reply to each and every question in the comment section specifically for this video because I want to solve all of your questions and I want to make sure all of my subscribers are very clear about DevOps engineering. Again, thank you so much for watching this video. If you know someone who is looking for such videos, please share our channel with them. Take care everyone. Bye. See you.